It's about 20 foot wide. About 20 foot wide. About 14 foot down. Mm -hmm. The bottom's spinning. There's some wind, isn't it? Some dark wind. Is. There's a light coming from underneath. I'm getting back into the car. I'm going. The bloody car won't go. That's the extraordinary story of Alan Godfrey, who joins us now. I'm pleased to say you're looking a lot better. Now, one of the things that intrigues me about this is that you're a former policeman as well. It seems to be a bit of a hazard of the job. Yeah, like Tony, uh, I was out in the police car one night, and six of my colleagues had seen this UFO uh, buzzing around the, the Tomadin Valley. And I came, actually came across it blocking the main trunk road through Tomadin. Now, you couldn't remember very much about it, presumably, and that's why you agreed to go into that hypnosis. I remember the incident very well. As, you know, I, I, the, the UFO existed. It was only 25 <coughs> yards off it. I mean, it was completely blocking the main road. What uh, made you want to go under hypnosis to find out more about <coughs> it, then? Well, it, I didn't go under hypnosis for about 12 months after the event. That's a long time afterwards. I mean, did you see any films or read any books or, about science fiction or anything in that time? I mean, maybe it was... Obviously, up to the event, I mean, I had no interest whatsoever in UFOs, the Loch Ness Monster or anything, you know. I was just a total police officer, 10 years service. Uh, and when you come across something like this, and the reaction within the job and the, um, from the Ministry of Defence and their investigations that I had to go under, mm. obviously I became interested in, in, in what I'd actually seen. Right. And when I found out through investigative work by other people that I had actually had a time lapse uh, and I was asked to do under hypnotic regression which incidentally was done by the police surgeon and it was sure. done under proper medical okay well I think I think you've established that I'm quite intrigued though to know what some of our skeptics have got to say about a story like that I mean it sounds very convincing now John Mason I know that you've spent a long time looking at this and you're not at all convinced but how do you explain a story like that? Well, firstly, let's say that hypnotic regression has been used in America in many, many cases to uh, look at people who've had these so-called abduction experiences. And in a lot of cases, there has been leading of the person under the influence. There was a couple of questions in that interview there where there was a certain amount of leading of the abductee by the interviewer. Now, Sorry, that... The doctor who carried out that session, I was the person who arranged the session. Ah, that immediately makes me sceptical. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I, no, no. I Hang did on. not utter one word during that session. But you were but there. No, please, I was there, but I was silent. I was the cameraman. The, invest, the interrogation was conducted by the doctor, who didn't even know that it, what, that it was a UFO event. I deliberately didn't tell him. Harry, can I, give you, can I just give you a very quick quotation? No, no, just one second. Now, this is a very unfair criticism. I did not lead the witness. I never spoke a word at all during that session. And the doctor had no idea what was coming next. He right. was just asked to invest. 
to in, uh, hypnotise a police officer. Harry, Sorry. Steve, does, Sorry. does that, does that, I, does that I, satisfy you? No, not at all. I'd like to give a very, very quick quotation from a guy who is past president of the International Society of Clinical Hypnotists. It'll have to be quick. Professor of psychiatry and, and various other things. And what he says about this kind of hypnosis is, there is no way by which anyone, even a psychologist or psychiatrist with extensive training in the field of hypnosis, can for any particular piece of information determine whether it is an actual memory versus a confabulation. That's it. By confabulation, he means a construction that comes out of the unconscious mind from things that have been read, from things that have been heard. Harry, what do you have to say to that then? Well, no, my comment is this, that I have arranged probably about a dozen or more hypnotic regression experiments with different doctors. Under hypnosis, well, what comes, how this comes about is you have a witness or witnesses who see a UFO Followed by think an they do. Well, all right, think they do. Followed by an amnesia. Uh, often they are multiple witness sightings. During hi the hypnotic regression because session... The the hypnotic... No, let me finish. During the hypnotic regression experiment sessions, they come out with the same account, more or less, <laughs> as Alan Godfrey. Under hypnosis, you know... their blood pressure rises, their pulse rate, they express or, or sh display extreme bodily fear. Now... If the, the accounts are very similar, I have no explanation. I wish I had. You must be Harry, aware Harry, of the I'm, quite, I'm still quite intrigued because I know that we could go down the path of, yes. of the hypnotism, yeah. which um, I mean, I'm still intrigued. Do you know how I got? The, I, hang yeah. on, I'm yeah. still intrigued yeah. by this business about losing an hour out of your life, which is actually what happened this to you as well, Linda. isn't yes. it, Linda? Yeah. Now, how did that happen? Yeah, I'd first like to say that before um, I had my UFO experience, or my mother and I had, had the experience. Um, I had no interest in UFOs at all, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have been so what, what insensitive happened? enough to laugh at somebody okay, who okay. had had yeah. an experience. Right. Got but some insensitive we were, people in here tonight. Very, very, very much so, yes. Um, my mother and I were innocently travelling home from Southport to Manchester after visiting a sick relation. We were buzzed by a UFO. It came 40 feet above our car. It was a massive craft, twice the size of a double-decker bus. It was a soundless craft. The lights on it were five feet in diameter. It slowed my car down from 66 miles an hour down to four miles an hour, and my car was literally bumping off the road. All the electrics were interfered with, and the engine was interfered with. We were stopped on the Queen's Highway. We were interfered with on, on, the, on that road by an, a craft of unknown origin. It's just fascinating. How much time did you lose exactly? We lost 55 minutes out of our lives, and I've been under hypnosis five times. Because you I'm want to find out hip, what happened. Yes, I do. But I want to find out where the craft came from. It was not from this earth. Tell me how seriously that was taken. I know you tried to find out from the MOD if they knew any yes, more about it. Yes, I wrote it. to the MOD um, on several occasions. I was ignored for a long, long time. And then I got a very silly, stupid letter back saying that um, they, they agreed that some UFO... Uh, Hang on, we don't, we don't need to no. see, we don't okay. need to see okay. the letter, Harry. Right. Okay. But they actually told you to go and see a doctor, didn't the, they? Uh, the second letter I got, the, the, sorry, the first letter I got, they advised me, to, uh, my mother and I, to go and see a doctor if we, if we were upset about it. Which you were obviously very upset about the letter as well. Oh, well, absolutely. in fact, we do have someone here tonight who has spent many years working for the Ministry of Defence, Ralph Noyes. Mm. Now, what about treating a case like that? It's well, I'm extremely sorry to hear that Linda had a silly and stupid letter. But what would you expect a government department to do about a story which is told like that? If I may speak personally, I haven't got the least doubt that what happened to Linda and what happened to Alan is paralleled by hundreds of cases worldwide which I think are very well evidenced. Uh, I thought it was very nice of the brave lady back there to report her citing that orange globe. I understand what the gentleman at the back was saying. Uh, but but what, does the, what does the Ministry of Defence do in these cases exactly? Of, what did you do? Because you The first you job of the Ministry of Defence is to consider whether anything has got into our airspace which shouldn't be there. Um, well, it sounds as if it has. Well, it never has in any solid form that we ever traced. And I think we're into a very difficult area here because when you start talking about something which is real but not solid, you're into a very weird area. <laughs> Um, the oh, Ministry of Defence received hundreds and hundreds of reports from the public every year. 
uh, in, in tricky years, meaning when things seem to be going on, we used to get seven or eight hundred reports, sometimes two or three hundred. But do they take it seriously enough? Every single time. Oh, but do, but hang on, but do, but do they take it seriously enough, do you think? May I respond to Linda? May I respond to Harry? We're running, we're running short of time. Yeah. To fire live rockets out of UFO, which had intruded into UK airspace. Okay, we're, sh we're, we're, short, we're short of time to go into another I'm story, I'm but hang on. deal with Linda's story. Sorry, sorry. The concern of the Ministry of Defence can only be, can only be, it is a Defence Department, has anything got into our airspace which shouldn't be there, which has got past our radar system, which might do damage. We never encountered anything which persisted for more than a short time. I'm sorry. Time. I'm going to have to stop you. I'm terribly sorry to interrupt, but thank you very much for filling us in on that.